Hello. I don't think it's on. <laughs> it's a prop for later. We'll find out. Do that right. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, it is fantastic to see so many people out here. Opening night. We really, really, really appreciate it. Um, on behalf of myself, I'm Zach Barlow, by the way. Uh, I'm the assistant director here at GP, uh, along with our head director, uh, Ernesto Manzano, and our technical director, uh, Joe Barenda. And on behalf of all the theater department, we thank you so much for spending your Thursday night with us. We really, really do. Um, you're in for a treat tonight. We're really excited. We've never done anything like this before. Uh, to actually have you guys on stage is different. Um, it's a different perspective. For the students, it's a different perspective for you guys. I hope it's a good experience. I really do. Um, so we have two shows tonight for you guys, okay? Uh, the first one's gonna run about 30 minutes. Second one's gonna run about 15 minutes. Both are unbelievably awesome. You're gonna love them. Um, and then after that, we're gonna have a talk back, but we'll get more into that here in a second. Um, a few housekeeping tips, if we do have something happen, um, please note that there is a big exit sign right over there back behind us. You can exit through there. There's also exits out here uh, to the sides of the stage too. Please go out those doors. Don't try and shuffle out through the front like we came in, okay? Just in case. Not, we're not anticipating anything, but just in case. Um, with that being said, um, I believe we are ready to go. So our first show of the night is going to be, excuse me, our first show of the night is going to be The Actor's Nightmare. Enjoy. Sorry, I don't know how I got in here. Thank goodness you're here. I've been calling you. Pardon? An awful thing has happened. Edwin's been in a car accident, and you'll have to go on for him. Good heavens, how awful. Who's Eddie? Eddie. Edwin, look, you have to go on for him. On for him? Well, he can't go on. He's been in a car accident. Yes, I understood that part, but what do you mean go on for him? He plays a part now. I know you haven't had a chance to rehearse it exactly, but presumably you know your lines, and you've certainly seen it enough. I don't understand. Do I know you? George, we really don't have time for this kind of joshing. Half hour! George? My name isn't George. It's... Well, I don't know what it is, but it isn't George. My God! Did you hear about Eddie? Uh, yes, I did. It's just too, too awful! No good luck tonight. George, darling, we're all counting on you. Of course you're a little too young for the part, and you are shorter than Edwin, so we'll cut all the lines of you bumping your head onto the ceiling. And don't forget when I cough three times, that's your kittens at the back of my dress. And then I'll slap you. We changed it from last night. Wait, please, what play are we doing? What is the play, please? Coward. Pardon? It's coward. The coward? No coward? <laughs> George, don't do that. For a second, I thought you were serious. Break a leg, darling. Coward? I wonder if it's private lives. At least I'd seen that one. I don't remember rehearsing this exactly. And am I an actor? I thought I was an accountant. Hello, Stanley. I heard about Edwin. Good luck tonight. We're counting on you. Wait, what play are we doing? Very funny, Stanley. No, really, I've forgotten. Checkmate. Checkmate? By Samuel Beckett. You know, in the garbage can. You always play these jokes, Stanley. Just don't do it on stage. Well, good luck tonight. I mean, break a leg. Oh, did you hear? Edwin broke both legs. I've never heard of checkmate. George, get in the costume. We have 15 minutes. Good God, I'm late. Hi, Eddie. You're not Eddie. 
Who are you? You've never seen me before? Who the devil are you? I don't know. George, I think. Maybe Stanley, but probably George. I think I'm an accountant. Look, no one is allowed backstage before performance. So you'll have to leave or be forced to report to the stage manager. Oh, she knows I'm here already. Oh, well, if Megary knows you're here, it's all right, I suppose. It's not my affair. I'm late enough already. I'd better just go home. <laughs> oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. George, stop that. Go into the dressing rooms to change. Really, you keep that up and we'll bring you up on charges. But where's the dressing room? George, you're not amusing. It's that way. And give me those. I'll soak them. Please don't soak them. Don't tell me my job. Now come get changed. The call is five minutes. Five minutes, everybody. Five minutes. Places! Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? At this evening's performance, the role of Elliot, normally played by Edwin Booth, will be played by George Spelvin. The role of Amanda, normally played by Sarah Bernhardt, will be played by Sarah Siddick. The role of Kitty the barmaid will be played by Miss Patrick Campbell. Dr. Crippen will play himself. The management wishes to remind the audience that the taking of photographs is strictly forbidden by law and is dangerous as it may disorient the actor. Thank you. That's true. Am I supposed to be Hamlet? <laughs> Who's yacht? Do you think that is? Where? The Duke of Westminster, I expect. It always is. Ah, uh, well, perhaps. To be or not to be? <laughs> I don't know any more of it. Really, she's sort of nondescript, I'd say. I bet you were just about to say how she's just like Lady Bundle, and that she has several chins and one blue eye and one brown eye, and a third eye in the center of her forehead. Weren't you? I guess so. Victor's like that too. I bet you were just about to say how you traveled around the world? Yes, I was. I traveled around the world. How was it? The world? <laughs> yes. Very nice. I always feared that the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? Not really. I always feared that the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? I guess it did. I always feared that the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? Hard to say. What brand biscuit box? <laughs> I always feared that the Taj Mahal would look like a biscuit box. Did it? I wonder whose yacht that is out there. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? My, this balcony looks dusty. I think I'll clean it up a little bit. Not only did the Taj Mahal look like a biscuit box, but women should be struck regularly like gongs. Extraordinary how potent cheap music is. Yes, quite extraordinary. How was China? China? You traveled around the world. How was China? I liked it, but I felt homesick. How was China? Lots of rice. 
The women bind their feet. How was China? I hated it. I missed you. How was China? I hated it. I missed Sybil? <laughs> How was China? I miss the maid. Oh, maid! How was China? Just wait a moment, please. The maid! <laughs> ah, there you are. I think you missed a spot here. How was China? Very large China. And Japan? Very small Japan. <laughs> and Ireland? Very green. And Iceland? Very white. And Italy? Very Neapolitan. And Copenhagen? Very cosmopolitan. And Florida? Very condominium. And Prathamborn? Very mobile homes. I don't know. <laughs> and Sybil? What? Do you love Sybil? Who's Sybil? Your new wife? Who you married after you and I got our divorce? Oh, we're remarried? <laughs> yeah, forgot about that part. <laughs> oh, Eddie, you make me laugh all the time. <laughs> so do you love Sybil? Probably I married her. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Eddie, we were mad to have left each other. Kiss me! I think she's simply obnoxious. <gasps> how very rude. Oh, Elliot, how can you treat me like this? Hello, Sybil. Well, since you ask, I'm very upset. I was inside writing a letter to your mother and wanted to know how to spell apothecary. Oh. A-P-O-T-H-E-R-C-A-Y. Thank you. Don't scribble, Sybil. Did my eyes deceive me? Or were you kissing my husband a moment ago? We must all speak in very low voices and attempt to be civilized. I was speaking in a low voice. Yes, but I could still hear you. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I can't hear a bloody word she's saying. The woman's a nincompoop. Say something, Elliot. I couldn't hear her either. <laughs> Elliot, you have to choose between the two of us. Do you love this creature or do you love me? I choose, uh, I wonder where the maid is. Forget about the maid, Elliot. You could never have a lasting relationship with the maid. Choose between the two of us. I choose, oh. God, I don't know my lines. I don't know how I got here. I wish I weren't here. I wish I had joined the monastery like I almost did right after high school. I almost joined, but then I did <laughs> Oh, Elliot, your malaria is acting up again. Come, come. So who do you choose? Me? Or that baggage over there? You're the baggage, not I. Yes, Elliot, who do you choose? I choose, I'm sorry, what's your name again? <laughs> Amanda? I choose Amanda. I think that's what he does in the play. Very well. I can accept defeat gracefully. I don't think I'll send this letter to your mother. She has a loud voice and an overbearing manner, and I don't like her taste in tea china. I hope, Elliot, that when you find me hanging from the hotel lobby chandelier, with my eyes all bulged out and my tongue sticking out, that you'll be very, very sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> what a dreadful sport she is. <laughs> no, poor Sybil, she's going to hang herself. Some women should be hung regularly like tapestries. Oh, who cares? Whose yard do you think that is? The Duke of Westminster. <gasps> How dare you mention that time in Mozambique? <laughs> oh, Ellie, I'm so sorry. I love you madly. <laughs> I've been held some of your cigarette ash. <coughs> <laughs> there, we're not angry. 
younger anymore, are we? Oh, Elliot, wait for me here, and we're going to wait together before Victor gets back. Oh, darling, isn't it extraordinary how pony cheap music is? Oh, hello, are you Victor? The same, my lord, and your poor servant, ever. This doesn't sound like no coward. A truant disposition. Good, my lord. You're not Victor, are you? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. Oh, yes? And how was it? Indeed. It followed hard upon. Hard upon. Yes, I see. No good, the maid. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly for the marriage tables. What does that mean? Gosh. My lord, I think I saw him yesterday. Oh, yes? Who? My lord, the king. <coughs> Your father. The king? My father. <clears throat> Seizing your admiration for a while with a tint ear, till I may deliver upon you the witness and marvel of these gentlemen. I see. I'm Hamlet now, right? <laughs> Two nights together, these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead waste in the middle of the night, bidding us encounter a figure like your father, on exactly to point Capape. He marched slowly and stately by their oppressed and fear-surprised eyes, whilst within his treacherous length they distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear. Stand dumb and speak not to him, but this to me, and dreadful secrecy in part they did. And I with them, on the third night, kept the watch, and, just as they had said, every word made good and true. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. Oh, my turn. Um, <laughs> much strange and wondrous tell you tell, Horatio. It doth turn my ear into a very merry bear barking. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we did thank an our duty to let you know of it, to write it down. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, yes, my lord. He wore his beaver up. His, his beaver up? He wore his beaver up. And does he usually wear it down? A countenance <laughs> more in sorrow than in anger. Uh, I'm, well, I'm sorry to hear that. My father was a king of great renown, beloved all over London town. And Denmark. I warrant it will. I warrant it will also. Our duty is to your honor. Wait, where are you going? Don't go! Oh, good, Amanda! Oh, speak no more, for thou turnst mine eyes into my very son, and I see such black and great spots as will not leave their taint. I haven't seen Victor. Saw someone earlier who thought might have been him, but it wasn't. Oh, speak no more. These words like daggers into your mind skin. No more, sweet Hamlet. Very well. What do you want to talk about? Then? No more! Oh, don't go! <laughs> Maybe someone else will come out in a minute. <laughs> Of course, sometimes people have soliloquies in Shakespeare. Let's just wait a moment more and maybe someone will come. Oh dear. To be or not to be, that is the question. Omeg! 
Nein! Nein! Oh, oh what a rogue and peasant slave am I, whether tis nobler in the mind's eye to kill oneself or not killing oneself to sleep a great deal. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our lives are rounded by a little sleep. Uh, thrift, thrift, Horatio, neither a borrower nor a lender be, but to thine own self be true. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. <coughs> Extraordinary how bunchy music can be. <laughs> uh, I've come to why vid wealthily in Padua. <laughs> If wealthily then happily in Padua, brush up your Shakespeare, start quoting him now. Da, 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 da. I'd wonder whose yacht that is. How was China? Very large China. How was Japan? Very small Japan. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Line! Oh my God. Oh my God. I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, <laughs> and I have not so many sins, because I judge the loss of heavens and the pains of hell. But most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and serving of all my love, and I resolve to confess my sins, to do penance and amend my life. Amen. <laughs> Nine! That's the act of contrition that Catholic school children say in order to be forgiven for their sins. Catholic adults say it too, I imagine. I don't know any Catholic adults. <laughs> line! When you call out for line, the stage manager usually gives you your next line in order to refresh your memory. Line! The quality of mercy may not be strained. It droppeth as a gentle rain upon the place below when we shuffle off this mortal coil. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. Get thee to an enemy! Line! Nunnery. As a child, I was taught by nuns. And in high school, I was taught by Benedict priests. I really rather liked the nuns. They were sort of warm. Though fairly crazy, too. <laughs> I liked the priest also. The school was on the ground of the monastery. In my junior and senior years, I spent a few weekends joining in the daily routines. Prayers, then breakfast, then prayers, then lunch, then prayers, <laughs> then dinner, then prayers. I found the, the predictability quite attractive. And the food was good too. I was going to join the monastery after graduating, but they said I was too young and should wait instead. And then I just stopped believing all those things. I became an accountant instead. I've studied logarithms and cosine and tangents. I'm really sorry. You came expecting to see Edwin Booth or someone. And instead you get me. I really am embarrassed. I don't remember attending a single rehearsal. I can't imagine what I was doing. I'm really sorry. Stella! <laughs> Uh, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. Oh, good, are you Ophelia? Get thee to an enemy. Get it? Oh, okay. This must be one of those modern hamlets. Nothing to be done. Pause, pause. Wrinkle nose. Nothing to be done. You're not a filly, are you? <laughs> we'll just wait, pause. Either he'll come, pause, pause, or he won't. It's a reasonable attitude. Are we on a guest waiting for Godot? No, dear. He came already and was an awful bore. 
Yesterday he came, garlic on his breath, telling a lot of unpleasant jokes about Jews, Pollocks, and stewardesses. And he, he was just dreadful. Pause, rolls her eyes upward. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry to hear that. Pause. <laughs> so, who are we waiting for? We're waiting for Lefty. And is he a political organizer or something I seem to recall? Yes, dear, he is a political organizer. He's always coming around saying, get off, get involved, and fight the system. Do this, do that. Oh, he's just dreadful. He's worse than Jane Fonda. And he has garlic breath, just like a doe. I don't know which of them is worse, and I hope neither of them ever come here again. So we're not waiting for anyone, are we? No, dear, we're not. It's just another beautiful day. You smell something? That's not your line. Willie doesn't have any more lines than that. Oh, how talkative you are this morning, Willie. There seems to be some sort of muck at the bottom of my garbage can. Mustn't complain. There's muck at the bottom of everybody's garbage can. Count your blessings, Willie. I do. One. Two. Three. Are you counting, Willie? I guess so. I'm up to three. Three is my eyesight. Oh, my God. I've gone blind. I can't see. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Oh, what a terrible day. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Oh, well. Not so bad, really. I only use my eyes occasionally when I wanted to see something, but no more. I really don't know this play at all. Count your blessings, Willie. Let me hear you count them. All right. One, two, three, that's my eyesight. Four, that's my hearing. Five, that's my master charge. Six, that's my... Did you say God, Willie? No. Why did you leave the monastery? Was it the same reason I left the opera? I have no idea. I left the opera because I couldn't sing. They were mad to have hired me. Certifiable. And they were certified shortly afterward, the entire staff. They now reside at the Rigoletta home for the mentally incapacitated in Turin. Uh, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Oh, Willie, listen. A voice. Perhaps there is a god. At this evening's performance, the role of Sir Thomas More, the man for all seasons normally played by Edwin Booth, will be played by George Spellman. The role of Lady Ellen, normally played by Sarah Bernhardt, will be played by Sarah Sidney. The role of Lady Margaret, normally played by Eleanor Duke, will be read by the stage manager. And at this evening's performance, the executioner will play himself. Wait, what did he say? The executioner will play himself. What does he mean the executioner will play himself? dreadful dungeon. It's more than I can bear. I made you a custard, Thomas. Mother's made you a custard, Father. Yes, thank you. Oh, Father, if you don't give in to King Henry, they're going to cut your head off. Aren't you going to eat the custard I brought you, Thomas? I'm not hungry, thank you. Oh my god, I've got to get out of here. He's over here. And he'll never give in to the king. No, no, I might. Quick, is this all over here? <laughs> yes, and you won't give in because you believe in the Catholic Church and the infability of the Pope and the everlasting life of the soul. I don't necessarily believe in any of that. Sir, there's been an error. I think it's fine if the king marries Anne Boleyn. I just want to wake up. Oh, don't deny God, Father, just to spare our feelings. Mother and I are willing to have you dead if it's a question of principle. <laughs> The first batch of custards didn't come out all that well, Thomas. This is the second batch, but it has a piece of hair in it. Oh, sure. I How much think... custard would you? Sir, there's been an error. 
I think it's fine that the king marries Anne Boleyn. I don't think the Pope is infallible at all. I think he's a normal man with normal capabilities who wears gold slippers. I thought about joining the monastery when I was younger, but I didn't do it. Oh, Willie, I was having such a pleasant dream. Go ahead. Let him cut your head off. It'll be a nice change of pace. <laughs> that place looks very real to me. I want to look up now. Or change place. I wonder who's got that is out there. No, thank you. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! <clears throat> Sir Thomas More, you have been found guilty of the charge of high treason. The sentence of the court is that you be taken to the Tower of London, and thence to the place of your execution, and there your head shall be stricken from your body. And may God have mercy on your soul. Let's talk about God. So right, I'm sorry I didn't join the monastery. Maybe I should have. And I'm sorry people drank mass in third grade. But I see no reason to be killed for it. Nothing to be done. That's what I find so wonderful. No! Do I understand you correctly? You wish to reverse your previous stand on King Henry's marriage to Anne and deny the Bishop of Rome? Yes, yes, God, yes. I could care less. Let him marry eight wives. That's a terrible legacy of cowardice for Sir Thomas to leave behind. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to ignore what you've said and cut your head off anyway. And then we'll all pretend that you went to your death no no notably. Mm -hmm. The church needs its saints, and the school children need their heroes to look up to. Don't you all agree? I agree. I know I need someone to look up to. Yes. Yes, I can feel myself waking up now. The covers have fallen off the bed, and I'm cold, and I'm going to wake up so I reach down and pull them up again. Sir Thomas More, prepare to meet your death. Be quiet. I'm about to wake up. <laughs> I'm awake! No, I'm not. <laughs> Sir Thomas, prepare to meet your death. Line. Line. You turn to the executioner, and you say, friend, be not afraid of your office. You send me to God. I don't like the line. Give me another. <laughs> <laughs> say it. I don't want to. Say it. Say it, Willie. It'll mean a lot to me and for generations of school children to come. <laughs> oh, Hamlet, speak the speech I pray on these tripping on the tongue. Say it. <laughs> Friend, be not afraid of your office. <laughs> Extraordinary how bunch of music can be. That's not the line. <laughs> Women should be struck regularly like gongs. George, say the line right. <laughs> They say you can never dream your own death, so I expect as soon as he brings the blade down, I'll wake up. So, perhaps I should get it over with. Say the proper line, George. Friend, be not afraid of your office. Goodbye, Willie. Goodbye, Hamlet. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Sir Thomas. You send me to God. Behold the head of Sir Thomas More. Oh, Willie, I wish I were blind so I could see all that. Oh, well, no matter. It's still been another happy day. Paws, smile, wrinkle his nose. Paws, pigs knit from head. Paws, wiggles ears, all in darkness. Utterly useless. No one can see her. She stares ahead. Count two. End of play.
guys, 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 did you hear the news? Just for the boy, just for the boy, just for the boy! The plan was called Operation D-. D minus. And one of the schools included in the plan was Park Vista Community High School, where a kid named Justin Lavoy. That's me! An 18-year-old honor roll. I get straight A's, man! It was the last semester of his senior year. Oh, Justin could not believe his eyes when a very pretty girl showed up.
it's true you make friends on the job. Da -da -da. You meet kids who are sensitive, smart and defenseless. Those are the ones you remember, the ones that you think about after you're gone. Oh. Consequences in life if I'm doing my job and I'm doing it right. I make life safer once more at time. Meanwhile, what the heck I gotta do to be with you? What the heck I gotta do? Who do I gotta be for you to be with me? Do you smoke? What? No, I don't, but if that's what you need, I can find some for you. I can be your supply. If you want to do that for me, I can be your guy. Oh! Seriously, these yes! to learn their own oh! consequences. If I'll get whatever you need. I'm doing my job, and I'm doing it right. I'm making life safer one school at a time. <laughs> if I am not a drug dealer. So, it's not like she asked me this day, and I got it for the very next day. It took me a while. So, you know, I'm trying to get it, and I just can't get it. So, what are you thinking as you're trying to get this pot to sell to her? I'm thinking, what the heck am I doing? Because I don't hang out with guys like that. So, I'm really scared and skeptical about it too at the same point. So, I asked my homeboy, and he was like, I don't know, man. Why are you asking me? Because I do not hang out with guys like that. So, what do you end up doing? I called a cousin who called a cousin who called a friend who called a couple dozen cousins cause it doesn't end. My cousin Justin's looking for a little something, something for a certain someone, some girl he wants to be touching. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. We were just discussing our cousin Justin. Wasn't Justin the cousin who made the honor roll, got the colleges buzzing? Are we close to our cousin Justin? Are we supposed to trust him? Are we thugs to our cousin Justin? We don't sell drugs, man. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. You get it yet? No, I'm about to get it. Is your dealer a student? I got you, girl. Don't sweat it. Let me know when you got it. As soon as I can. Yo, what is up with this fussing? This isn't up for discussion. This is our cousin coming to us to blood and we love him. Oh, look at Justin, he blushes. Our little cousin is crushing. Sorry for rushing to judgment. Why, Why should we get, get you these drugs? drugs? Love. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Only if you believe in love. Love. Cousin 25 duck with some sweating buckets. He hands me a sandwich bag with some little green nuggets. <laughs> I got it for you. You want it now? Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Everybody's got a cousin who can hook him up with something. Now, according to the police, Justin is a drug dealer. Maybe he didn't know where to get the drugs. Maybe he did. What we do know is this. The next day, Justin brought a rolled up baggie of marijuana to school for Naomi. And I was like, oh my god, I'm actually about to do this. So, we was in class, right? And I sat right down next to her and she was like, Justin, do you have it? Yeah, I do. And I was like, you know what, we're gonna wait for a few. Because I didn't want to be like, oh hey! And just light in her hand or whatever. So, we waited. <laughs> And then she was like, Okay, put it in my purse. So I slid it in there. And then she was like, Okay, 
Here, take the money. Justin, take the money. I don't want your money. I got this just for you. Keep your money. There's nothing I won't do for you. I'll come through for you every time. Just in time. Just in time. Naomi, I know there's a reason you were transferred here to me. Guilty, Naomi, I know there's a reason this is a really rocket's destiny. Naomi, you know me. I will be there every time. Every time. Anytime. I don't want your money. I got this just Naomi. and the penalty is even harsher for selling it on school property. By taking the money, Justin had made an irreversibly bad decision, and since he was over 18, he was legally an adult when he made it. Seriously, these kids need to learn there are consequences in life. I am doing my job, I am doing it right. I am making life safer one school at a time. Just in the boy, the honor student? Yeah, the one who gave us the answers in algebra. Wait. In May, the police arrested 31 students. Justin was one of them. Freeze! You have the right to remain silent! Everybody who sold drugs to undercover cops is busted! Everybody who sold drugs to undercover cops is busted! Everybody who sold drugs to undercover cops is busted! Everybody who sold drugs to undercover cops is busted! Your word against terrorists, the cops have every text. The cops have every text. The cops have every text. Don't worry, girl. I got the stuff. I got you. <laughs> he knew he'd lose in court. He had to take a plea. Three years probation and I pled guilty to the felony. What? A felony? A nickelback's a felony. What? Justin. Say goodbye to college. They, they got, got you. you. These kids need to wake up. I don't want to go too much into it. But drugs hit really close to home for me. I saw the effects growing up of cocaine, marijuana, and ecstasy. With family I, members? Yes, I've seen what it can do to a family. That's all I want to say about it. Do you wish someone like you had done this type of work? Yes. And I hope someone like me keeps doing it. But still. There are kids you remember. The ones that you think about after you're gone. During the week he spent in jail, Justin couldn't help but think about Naomi. She was a light-skinned, Puerto Rican, Dominican, long hair, mature in the body, like, whoa. That's not the only reason I liked her, though. Yo, if it had been a guy coming up to me asking me for drugs, I'd have been like, no, get out of my face. I don't hang around with guys like that. It's because it was her. Have you talked to her since all of this happened? No. I'd love to, though. I'd love to have that conversation. What, what do you think you'd say? I'd say, what the heck did you do? What the heck did you do? What the heck did you 